I'm going to show you kind of a cool way, hopefully, that you remember when you need to, a lot of times in the multiple choice section of the AP stats test, you have to match a box and whisker plot to a histogram. And, or, 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 the first one's always in, uh, the first question always has you like compare distributions, and sometimes they give you these box and whisker plots, and you're like, you have trouble kind of visualizing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like a, a, a crude way to transform a box and whisker plot into a histogram, so you can have, have an idea of what the distribution would look like. Because we're pretty good at describing histograms. When it comes to box and whisker plots, we're like, ooh, ooh, no. So let's see if we can do that. Ready? Here we go. Uh, Matching box and box plots to histograms. So let's first think of a histogram that we understand. A, it's called a uniform histogram, meaning the same amount of data is in each one. So suppose I have a, a spinner, and it looks something like this. Meow, wink, wink, one, two, three, four, and there's like an arrow here, and I go, and I spin it, and I go, spin it, and I make a little histogram here. Uh, the nuns, the twos, the threes, the fours, and here's the frequency. And I spin it, oh, I get a one, oh, I get a two, oh, I get a one, oh, I get a three, oh, I get a four, oh, I get a two, oh, I get a three, and I keep going. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever for a wee long time, until I get like thousands, I suppose I, suppose I spun it 4,000 times. Then I probably, here's my frequency, have about 1,000 of each. Make my histogram. So there'd probably be about a thousand of each. Maybe not exactly, but let's say just about close to it. Close enough, okay? So if I was going to make a box and whisker plot out of this thing, um, I'd probably figure out that about 25% were here, 25% here, 25% in here, 25% in there. So my box and whisker plot would be equally spaced. All of these spaces would be about the same width. So a uniform box and whisker plot, because the area, remember that when you look at a histogram, it's the, the area of the histogram um, represents the percent of data values between those numbers on the bottom. Because uh, the taller it is, the, the more frequency, the more things are in um, that little space, that class or that bin, or depending on what your teacher calls it. Uh, so a uniform distribution, you can imagine, has a histogram that looks kind of like this. All the bins have about the same amount. That's the histogram. So because a, they're all nice and evenly spaced, you can imagine the box and whisker plot that represents that. All the little the spaces between here and here, here and here, here and here, here and here are all equal. Here's my Q1 my median, my Q3, okay? So I want you to imagine that histogram, instead of a histogram, imagine that histogram is actually a fish tank, okay? Just bear with me. So suppose it was a fish tank, and, um, and that fish tank had walls at every one of the five number summary. So it had one here, one there, one here, one here, and one here. Unless there's an outlier, ignore that fish. That's a fish you got away, that's like out there. Okay, those ones just forget about that one. Okay, so what I have is I have the same amount of water in each of those little areas. Okay, so what would happen if I just slid, if I slid one of those walls away? Suppose I took this wall and I slid it out here to right here. What would happen to that water level? You can imagine as it moved out, the water level would slowly decrease, go down. The same amount of water would be in there, but now the level would go down because you open that wall, okay? 25% of the data is in each one of these, meaning 25% of the area of the histogram has to be here, 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 here. So 25% of the water, the water is representing the data values are in each one. So suppose I squeeze this guy up to here. That would be like moving this wall here. Wouldn't that bring that water level way up? And you can see, I, whoops, I got this wall over. A box and whisker plot that looks like this would have a histogram that kind of, kind of, roughly, I don't know exactly, but sort of, you can get an idea, something like this, skewed right. Okay? So what you can do is just think of this fish tank thing. And remember, between each of those walls is the same amount of water. So when you look, 
at a boxing muscle play, you kind of see it a little different. I'm going to show you a couple more examples. Now here's one that they always get students on, and it's like the most common answer that they say, which of these uh, box and whisker plots is best represents a normal model? So you imagine, well here's a, a normal model you'll get to, it's a bell-shaped curve, it looks like that, and everybody seems to put this, this box and whisker plot on it right here. Okay, you say, oh, because you see like this is kind of fat here, and this is kind of fat here, they kind of look the same, if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit. All right, do not be fooled. Fish tank. Here we go. Fish tank. I am going to show you that it's not this. Imagine this was a fish tank with wall here, wall here, wall here, wall here, wall here, and all of these between these will have the same amount of water. If the same amount of water is in each one of these, the highest level is going to be on the ones that squeeze. Imagine squeezing it, the water goes up. So this guy seems to be the most narrow, so his water level is going to be way up here. This guy is about twice as wide as this one, so the water level is going to be about half the height. This guy is even a little bit wider than that, so it's going to be down a little bit lower. And this guy is pretty narrow, let's see, almost the same amount, so probably up here. So the histogram that actually goes with this box and whisker plot looks like this. Let's make pretend, pretend it's like this. There's lots of uh, bins here. We look like this. That box and whisker plot, surprisingly, is bimodal. But you wouldn't think about it had you not used the fish tank method. This is called the, the kernel, the South High Kernel fish tank method. So notice, why is it bimodal? There's two modes. You can make that noise in the middle of the test too, just woo it out. Um, not that. It's not that. That guy, you can see, would probably look more like this. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. That's the same one I just did, isn't it? Oh, high level, lower level, lower level. Oh, hmm, messed it up. Let's try it again. Must be like this. Let's see, where are the highest levels going to be? Let's see. I may want to move this out a little bit to get out to that end. Let's put the walls up. These guys all have the same amount of water. Oh, the highest level of water is going to be here and here. And one, two, this is a, over two times as high, so but this is going to be right here. Right here, here's my histogram, unimodal and symmetric. That means you kind of match it with a curve. But be careful. There's one thing you can't tell. You really can't tell from a, um, a box and whisker plot if the data is like bimodal. If there's like a little mode or a clump in there, you only know the five numbers. It doesn't give you a lot. This is a good way just to match because you see those problems. And it's a good way if you have a, a you know a number of box and whisker plots on the same graph and you're trying to compare where the stuff is. You can use the fish tank method. Just squeeze it out sideways if they're. Uh, vertical. Okay, so that is it. That's the fish tank method brought to you from AP Stats Guy at apstatsguy.com. Come to my site. I'm gonna have lots of more videos up there if you ever go. And I think uh, that's just about it. If you have any questions, you can email me um, apstatsguy at gmail.com.